This workout is for anyone who is injured and is unable to do a traditional standing workout. So if you've got a twisted ankle, a sore knee, a bad low back that's just not allowing you to, to do standing workouts or workouts where you're up and down a lot, then this is the workout for you. We're seated in a chair for our cardio portion and then we're down line on the mat for our strength portion. So if you're unable to get from the chair down to the ground, then this isn't the best workout for you. Now you do need some tools. So we need a chair so we can get that cardio portion in and then a pair of moderate dumbbells for the strength. Now I'm also going to use one of these small squishy balls for one of the exercises. So if you have that, grab it. If you don't, they're a great little inexpensive tool and I've got the link down below on where you can grab one. All right, let's go get you warmed up. Hey there, I'm PJ from fitnesswithpj.com. And hey, listen, I help women over the age of 40 reclaim the tush of their 20s. If that interests you, click that subscribe button and let's keep working together. Now let's get warmed up. As we warm up, I'll chat about the workout and we'll get right into it. You ready? Awesome. Okay, sit yourself a little away from the back of your chair, nice and tall in your spine. So first off, let's find some good posture. Slide the chin in so the earlobes are over the shoulders. Good, draw up through the spine. Perfect, now keep that position while we do some arm circles. So we'll stay seated for the cardio portion. It's gonna be like a Tabata style. So eight rounds of two different moves for 20 seconds. And then as I said in the intro, we'll move down onto the mat for the strength portion. And by the way, bravo to you. You are here because you've got an injury of some sort and yet you still know and still want to work out. So I am so proud of you and I will work hard and I, with this programming and I have to give you a workout that will enable you to continue working on your fitness without aggravating whatever injury you might be suffering with right now. All right, let's open and close. So maybe it's a broken foot, twisted ankle, knee replacement, blown up knee, it's just not moving. <laughs> all right, we're going to work around all of that today. Last three, two, and one, and bring the knee up like we're marching and the other leg. So if you do have a cast on or a boot on, recognize that you are gonna work a little harder on that one side because it's pulling up more weight. All right, keep that posture though. Last four, three, two, one. All right, now we're gonna do a double knee lift. So you might wanna scoot yourself further away from the back of the chair, because as the knees lift up, you're gonna lean back a bit. Try not to round the spine too much, okay? So we're still using that posture that I got you set up. As the knees come up, the arms go up. Yes, no problem. Let's give it a try, ready? Go, so knees up. Press up, lean back, good job. You're gonna feel the hip flexors. Now you go as fast as you want, totally up to you. Abs and gates, we're in a bit of a V sit here, working your abs. Nice, breathe, Whew. Time, all right, now sit up nice and tall, get that posture. From this position, let's open the legs out and in, and then add the arms, ready, set, and go. So it's kind of like a modified jumping jack. Now you can move totally through the arms if you'd like or just through the elbows like I am. It's your workout, babe. You do what you want. You do you. Like I said, I'm just damn proud you showed up. So those are our two moves, okay? Yes, no problem. All right, so we start with the knees up, little bounces, little bounces, little bounces. Love it, and now let's add those arms up. Up, up. We lean back a bit, whoo. Keep those abs engaged. Time, whoo. All right, so we're gonna open and close. Just pushing my chair back a bit, ready? Sit and add the arms. And again, you go as fast as you want. What's gonna work for you right now? Oh. 
time. Whew. All right, we've got those little bounces again. Let's get them going with the legs. When the timer goes, we add the arms. Ready, go. Up, 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 good. Now I'm picking up my tempo a bit. You do, whether or not you can, or maybe, heck, maybe you're going faster. Bravo. <laughs> Abs engaged, time. Whew. We're almost there, and then we move on, okay? So open and close, we add with the legs, we add those arms, let's get the arms up. Ready, sit nice and tall, open, open, good. This one's kind of fun. <laughs> I actually like this one. I was practicing the whole workout a bit, actually, upstairs in my office, and I'm like, hey, I was just playing around with this move, and I thought, hey, this is fun. I think you'll like this. <laughs> time. All right, so we're gonna bring knees up and arms up. When we hear that timer, we just have one more of each, and then we're moving on to a new set. Ready, set, go. Time, bravo. Okay, we're taking it into a wood chop pattern. So if you're familiar with a wood chop, that's where we bring a dumbbell down or we slam a med ball down to the ground. In our case, what we're gonna do is bring the feet together, arms up, and then try to drop that wood chop, that dumbbell med ball down and bring it up again, okay? 20 seconds on, ready, sit nice and tall. I'm scooted even closer to the edge of my chair for this one, and bring the arms up and then throw it down, good. Now let's keep the posture fairly tall so we're not leaning forward as you would do on a normal wood chop if we were standing. And breathe. <laughs> Time. All right, bring your arms out like you're in a fighter position. We're gonna jab, jab, and then as you jab one arm, the opposite leg's gonna kick out. Good. Now, if you're thinking, PJ, that's just way too much <laughs> coordination for me, don't worry about it. <laughs> just get the jabs in, okay? All right. <laughs> See, elbows go back in. Good, hands around the chin area. Push, press, time. All right, here we go. So start with feet together. We're going back to that wood chop. Arms are up. I'm interlacing my hands. All right, sit on the edge of your chair and go. This probably looks really bad from a YouTube perspective, <laughs> this certain exercise here. <laughs> I don't think I'll take a screenshot of this exercise and throw it up on social media. <laughs> but he's getting our heart rates up time <laughs> without injuring anything. All right, so we start with the jabs, okay? So we jab, jab, and then add a leg extension. Good. If you're able to, flex the foot, land soft, nice and tall on the spine. Time. All right. Sit on the edge of your seat. Interlace your hands. Bring the elbows right beside the ears. Tall in the spine for me. Ready and go. How you doing? Good job. Time, whew, all right. Jab, leg extension, so get the elbows in towards the rib cage, hands are up by the chin, ready, and leg extension and the opposite arm, good. Flex the foot if you're able to, okay, depending on your injury. So one way to get our heart rates up when we have to do our cardio seated is, as you guessed it, moving the arms and the legs at the same time. Time, all right, one more of each and then we're done. Scoot yourself forward a bit, feet together, knees together, arms up, 
fingertips or fingers interlaced and go. Really getting the hips too on this one, time. Scoot yourself back a bit, nice and tall in that posture. We jab, opposite leg extends, ready, set, and go. Now when we jab, we're placing that arm out there, we're not just flinging it, okay? Rotating the knuckles so that they're level with your ground. Good, nice, and go girl, go. Time. All right, we're gonna make our way down onto the ground, okay? I'm gonna give you some time to do that. Again, dependent on your injury, it might take you a bit more to get yourself down. So don't rush it. I'm getting my chair out of my way. If you've got your dumbbells, place them on each side of your mat. And then if you've got that small Pilates ball, we'll use that. All right, hopefully you're made yourself down onto the mat. We have three rounds of three movements, 40 seconds on. We'll start with the chest press. Let me just quickly demo it to you, okay? You can have the feet on the ground or you can have them up. Elbows lined up with the shoulders and wrists are lined up with the elbows and we press straight up and bring them back down. Now, if you have any shoulder issues, I want you to bring your elbows slightly closer to the rib cage, okay? So they're not so flared out. You ready? Get set up. Wrists over shoulders. Good. Or wrists over elbows, I should say. And then when we press up, the dumbbells end above the chest. Back of the neck is long. Now, if your injury allows you to, you could also lift your hips up to work into your glutes and your low back but you do what's not going to aggravate anything on your body, okay? Now when the timer goes, we'll use just one dumbbell to work our back muscles. We have 40 seconds, time. Now, one dumbbell only and grab onto the end furthest from you with the dumbbell pointed down to your head. Now. Angle the dumbbell away from the noggin. Keep the arms fairly straight. Allow the dumbbell to drop down the ground behind you and then pull back over. Dumbbell above the chest and do it again. So we wanna move just through the shoulders, doing an exercise called the pullover. Working into your lats, triceps and shoulders. When the dumbbell drops behind the head, don't allow the low back to over arch. So you've got some recruitment in the abdominals. Now, if you want to add a bit more and the injury allows you, bring the legs up and as your dumbbell drops, your toes come down to the ground. But we're not allowing that low back to lift off of your mat. Time. All right, dumbbell to the side, working into the abs. Hands are light behind the head. On this exhale, lift and twist to one knee, back down and then the other side. So you'll roll onto that arm slightly that's on your ground working into the obliques for what's called a crossover crunch. So those are our three moves. All right, we'll take it back to the chest press when the timer goes. Support the head. Don't want to feel this time in the neck. All right, so let's get the elbows lined up with the shoulders and then slide them forward just a tad. Wrists are over your shoulders, back of the neck is long and dumbbell presses straight up. They touch center and lower back down. If your injury allows you to, you can add that bridge.
pullovers are coming up next. Time. All right, so you want to hold on to that dumbbell end that's furthest from the head and then angle it away from you. Keep the arms fairly straight, abs engaged, and lower the arms down. Dumbbell hits the ground behind your head and then pull back over. Maybe you've decided you want to try adding the legs too. So what the legs does is it Gonna, it's going to ask you to work your abs more, all right? Because as the legs lower down, the low back wants to arch off your mat. And you're using your deep core muscles to not allow that to happen. So if you find that you can't control that low back, then I don't want you to do the leg portion. <laughs> we need to recruit the abs in a different way instead of trying to muscle our way through this. And if you have a boot on because of, a, because of your injury time, then that's going to make it a little harder, isn't it? <laughs> but you're okay with that. Here we go. Crossover crunches. Hands are light behind the head. And exhale and lift and twist. So if you are injured, and again, I'm sorry for that, that sucks. Um, I do have a few other workouts on the channel and uh, you could, I'll place them down below in the description so you can favorite them for the next time you want to come and work out. Time. All right. Last round. Back to the chest press. So dumbbell in each hand. Elbows are slightly in front of the shoulders. Wrists on top of those elbows and press up. And if the injury allows you, push those hips up. Work into the glutes. Really push through the heels if you're doing that bridge pattern with me. And engage the hamstrings, glutes, and even your low back. Working a bit in your low back. Time. All right. Pull over. So we're holding on to that end furthest from the head and then angle it away from the head. Go. Now you can add the legs again, though, only if you can control that low back. Keep it neutral on your mat. Moving through the shoulders now. So keep those elbows just slightly bent and then nothing else through the elbow joint. Time. Crossover crunch. Hands light behind the head. Allow the head to drop into the hands a bit. And exhale and lift and twist. We're moving on after this exercise. Time. All right, roll yourself onto your left side for me. So if that means you need to flip yourself around a bit so you can still face me, go for it. But I want everybody on their left side. Bottom leg we're not concerned about, it's the top leg we are. Turn that hip forward, that top hip, and then press that right leg behind you a bit. Now leading with your heel, go, lift the leg up for a side leg lift. So if you have a boot on, then yeah, you're going to work a little harder on that one side. But I won't kill you. <laughs> There's the good news. <laughs> I know the empathy from Fitness with PJ is just amazing. <laughs> 
Now this is a really good move though to train your outer hip muscles, your glute med, which can be weak and cause everything from knee pain, hip pain, to low back pain. So this is a great little non-weight bearing exercise to hit some hip stabilizers. Now when the timer goes, we're gonna stay on this side, right here, time. Bring the knees forward now. Keep the feet together and just lift the top knee up. Still keeping this top hip rolled forward though. So we're not rolling back as the leg lifts, we're still staying forward. Now at this point, this is where I like to bring my top arm forward on the mat in front of me to really make sure that I don't roll back. Now when the timer goes, we are going to flip ourselves to the other side. So you know the movement, so what you could do is simply just turn over. You don't have to see me, I'll cue you. Um, if that helps you, depending on your injury, again, maybe moving all the way around the mat is not going to work for you. So you can flip, just literally roll over time and have your back to me. <laughs> all right, so side leg lift. Left leg's extended. Turn that hip forward, that left hip forward. Now lead with the left heel and lift up. So that left leg is pressed back a bit. We call that hip extension. And we're leading with that left heel so we get a better isolation of the glute med. 40 seconds here and then we'll stay here for clams. Time. Bring the knees forward. Roll that top hip forward again. Keep the feet touching. And now let's lift that left knee up. Open up for clam and lower. Now we have an ab exercise and an upper body exercise for the next one before we do all this one more time. And the good news, then you're done. <laughs> we did it. Time. All right, get yourself situated in a V sit. So if you've got that Pilates ball, place it right in the small of your back, lean back. Otherwise, just hold yourself in a V-sit like this. Bring your dumbbells up just above the chest, shoulder area, and then open up for a chest fly and close. Good. So you can use the Pilates ball to help stabilize you a bit. Again, it's really an expensive little tool. You can use it for a number of different moves. So if you don't have one, when we're done here, just click on the link down below and uh, it'll take you to a page on my website where I list all the tools that I use and where to get them. Time, okay, ready? Let's do the other side, side leg lift. So now it's that line on our left side, right leg extended, press back. Right hip pointed down, lead with that right heel. Now these are super quick transitions, so don't fret if you're just getting yourself set up now. Um, I never know, especially with these workouts, where the injury is and how quick you can get set up. So I want you to go at your pace. Clams are coming up. Woo, time, yep. <laughs> Hello to those hip muscles. So now let's bring those knees forward, okay? Keep the feet together, and we're just simply lifting that top leg up and then lowering down. So once again, this muscle, really important guy to keep strengthened, and it may be one that 
If you've ever had knee pain or hip pain or low back pain and gone to physio, they may have recommended you strengthen this muscle. Time. Okay, let's get to the other side. Again, you can just roll over. You don't need to physically see me if flipping around like I'm doing is aggravating to your injury. Top leg straight, roll that top hip forward and lead with the heel and lift up. Good, pay attention to that you haven't turned that toe up. You wanna really make sure that you lead with the heel. That's gonna get that glute med fired up further. Time. Knees centered towards the center of your body, feet together. We're just lifting that left knee up now. Keep that left hip forward though. Oh, my hips feel like they're 100 pounds each right now. <laughs> I feel like I've got cement. <laughs> this is good for us, though. Don't worry. Trust me. I'm a trained professional. <laughs> but, woo, when we're working these little guys, they can really tire quickly because they're littler muscles, right? And as I said, they also tend to be weaker on us, too. Just the chest fly is last, and then we stretch. So we are so close. Hang in there at home. Time. All right, here we go. Give me that V sit. You can take that ball, place it in the small of your back, and right under the bum almost, and open and close. Working upper body while we also get that core involved. Breathe. Woo, this one can get the abs, huh? <laughs> Almost there, come on. We're so close, this is the last exercise. Let's do this. Time, bravo. Take yourself down, extend the legs, arms overhead, and just stretch at fingertips to toes. Couple of deep breaths here. Let's stretch the side of the body with one of my favorite stretches. I call it the banana stretch. So walk your left foot towards your left side, cross your right leg on top, and now grab onto the right wrist with your left hand and curl your body towards the feet. Now you want that right shoulder on the ground and right hip on the ground. So your banana, you're kind of banana shaped. And you should feel that lovely stretch down that right side of the hip. Right side of the body. And back to center. Now step your left foot towards the left, cross the right foot on top, and keep that right hip, that, or sorry, <laughs> keep that left hip on the ground. Now grab onto the left hand, the left wrist, and walk yourself towards your feet, creating a banana shape here, and feeling that now down our left side. Really nice side of body stretch here. And to center, knees are bent, extend the left leg straight up, stretching into your hamstrings. If you're able to, interlace the hands behind the thigh. And now let's lift the head up, slide the chin in and lower the head down so the back of the neck is long. And bend the knee, 
straighten your other leg for me and pull this knee in towards the opposite shoulder. So you'll roll off of that left hip a bit to stretch into the left glute. So I'm pulling up towards the right shoulder. I'm getting a stretch into the glute and the glute meat that we just trained. And release, foot on the ground, other leg straight up. Press the back of the knee away from you. Ensure that back of the neck is still long. And now bend the knee. You can have the hands on top of the thigh or behind the knee. Straighten your other leg and pull that knee towards, on an angle, towards the left shoulder now. Back to center, bring the arms in a T position, palms up, knees are bent, feet hip width apart, drop your knees to your right, gaze to the left. If your injury allows you to, you can take that right foot and place it onto the hop of that left outside of the knee. And back to center, readjust, get yourself centered, knees are apart and drop them to your left, turn your gaze to the opposite direction of the knees, and again if your injury allows it, you can take that left foot and now place it on the outside of that right knee. and back to center. Pull both knees into your chest, rock yourself up to a seated position. Actually, I'll go this way so you can see me. Legs are straight, inhale the arms straight up, exhale, fold forward, and we did it. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you recover quickly, and as I said at the beginning of the video, please click subscribe. I'd love the opportunity to keep working with you. If you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up would be appreciated. And if you've been to my videos in the past, come and join us on Patreon. It's an amazing community that helps keep this channel going here on YouTube. And in return, I offer them a ton of perks and benefits only exclusive to that group. All the information's down there in the description. Thanks again and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day. Mwah.